Right outside of the area, whips the ball in left footed, Savage trying to attack, Pedersen back post, what a goal! Good delivery in, Sinclair gets there first, Pedersen for oh! <laughs> Great intercepts, finds Pedersen in the area! And it's 2-1 to Rovers! Oh, he could well be the hero! Martin Gump Pedersen has smashed the ball into the roof of the bear! The VAR Show The one place for your weekly football update Hola, a very warm welcome to a VAR show, the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to go into the theme of interviews and we have the former Blackburn and Norway star Mr. Morten Gams Pedersen with us. So without wasting much time, I would like to first thank Morten for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to your show and I would like to begin by asking you, how are you and what are you doing these days? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm good, thank you. I'm uh, playing football at the moment. Uh, the season is starting in 10 days, so we're doing the, the latest preparation so we can... Uh, Hopefully, get a good start. Definitely. So, uh, you know, like uh, I'll start. I'll talk of your career as a whole. You know, like starting from knowledge. You know, all the way in a youth career to Alta, where you're playing right now. <laughs> How has the journey yeah. been for you? No, it's been good. It's been uh, interesting, and it's always been a dream. So, uh, I started in uh, yeah, in my hometown, really small place, and uh, I played there on my local team before I went to Trump's as my first professional team. Uh, yeah, uh, develop as a player and uh, get a chance to get into the Premier League with Blackburn and of course that was the, probably the biggest dream a footballer can have and just before that uh, I had my debut for the national team in Norway and yeah, I played not over nine years in uh, in Blackburn and then I went to Turkey for one year, then I went back to Rosenborg in, in Norway, back to Tromsø where I had started my professional career and now I tried to yeah, give back to uh, to Alta, uh, it's a, uh, the biggest team in my county where I was born, and uh, hopefully can get up to the professional league now, the the big league. So you know, talking of Alta, you know, like I couldn't believe that you are still playing. You know, at the age of 38 at Alta in Norway, what keeps you going? Yeah, I think it's the love of love for football. I always love football. I don't I don't play for the money and those kind of things. And uh, I use loads of uh, loads of extra time to stay healthy and and those things. So I think that pays off now. That's why I still can play and I feel good. So I still feel like I'm 25. <laughs> so you know, like uh, like, do you do anything outside of football? Like many of the footballers, they have been uh, like you know like created to practice yoga or something. Do you do anything? Yeah, I, I, yeah, like mobility is a very important thing and strength and of course food and sleep and those kinds of things uh, are very important and uh, I, I try to do it as well as possible. I've been doing like a little bit of those things you talk a bit about. Uh, I think the most important thing is that you enjoy what you're doing, you know, because that gives you the energy to actually do the things like all the extras to keep you going and yeah, but the love for the game is the, is the main thing. You know, like uh, you, st- you, t- you spoke about Blackburn, you, you, st- you had around nine years spell and it was a quite a successful spell. You had around uh, above 250 <coughs> appearances for Blackburn in the Premier League, maybe one of the, if not the <coughs> highest level of football. How was your time at Blackburn? Was it like when you first moved to Blackburn, were you very excited or something? Of course, I think when you when you as a kid, you know, when you start watching the Premier League in Norway, uh, when I was young uh, and I was living in my hometown, every Saturday there was like the Premier League and that was like the, the highlight of the week and to watch and those kind of things. So it was a dream come true. And of course, you're so excited when you get there, you are nervous and all the players you, you're going to train with the first day. It's like you, you see them on TV, you heard about them, and all the things and suddenly you're just one of them. So. Uh, of course, the uh, the butterflies in the stomach when you when you're coming into training, they yeah, <laughs> good butterflies. So you know, like uh, you moved from Tromsø in Norway to Blackburn. What was the biggest shock for you when you when you first reached England? I think the tempo of the game and the quality. You know, it's it's such a high 
quality game and the tempo and the good thing when you go to the Premier League when you when you go into training you don't have any bad players and those kind of things you know all are all are top level players you know they they buy players in for, for millions to perform for you and it's it's quite tough you know because everybody wants to to have their own place in the team so um, the level of football and the tempo is the biggest difference so uh, uh, yeah took uh, took a little bit of time to adapt but when you first get into it you just enjoy the game so you know like uh... You had a lot of successful moments at Blackburn. You, I remember the goal against, I think Arsenal you scored in a free kick. That was a, a, amazing and many more other goals like that. And uh, But if you had to choose one like standout moment from your Blackburn days, which one would that be? I think it's hard to choose one, but of course for history-wise, I think the winning goal against Burnley, home at Ewood Park against the biggest rivals, you know, and all those kind of things. And uh, I think not when I scored a goal, I realized some big and important the goal was. I think it's more afterwards when you know when you, you know all the history and all the things between the clubs then then maybe I'll put that as the most important goal or fun goal because it's always nice to beat the locals and especially Burnley. So uh, that was a great feeling. So you know like the tables have turned now. Burnley are in the Premier League and Blackburn languish around 15th in the championship and when you were there I think uh, you suffered one relegation towards the end. And uh, yeah, I play what? And sorry, I'll just complete, yeah. I'm sorry. I'll just complete the question. Like, when you were there, did you ever realize that you know, like, what's going around, like, in behind the scene, maybe at the administration level, was bad or something? Yeah, uh, it was hard to get relegated. That was one of my toughest things in the career, you know, because uh, Blackburn was one of the clubs that been the longest time in the Premier League, and they actually are one of the few clubs that won the Premier League as well. And uh, when they get the uh, get into the stage when you realize actually you get relegated in championship it was a, it was a tough hit to take so uh, the, um, the, the interesting thing is that the championship is quite a tough league as well it's a good league I think loads of the loads of the teams in in the championship could have played in the Premier League as well you know and if you put those teams into other top leagues in Europe they will do ever so well so uh, I think the Premier League and the championship uh, if you take those two leagues together and you take the other two top leagues from other clubs, now other other countries, they have no chance because the, the level of the championship is so high at the moment as well. So, uh, just I'll just add a uh, so a segue to that question is that uh, like when you were there and uh, you got relegated, which was one of the most difficult moments as you said for your career, like uh, a lot of blame is put on maybe the higher board, like they didn't they mismanaged the team. <coughs> So when you were there, did you sense anything like that, like the t club was being mismanaged? Of course, there was loads of things going on in the club that wasn't wasn't good. Uh, I think there were certain people that uh, had an impact on things, and uh, Jerome Anderson was involved in a transaction. And yeah, there was the thing with the the Steve Team thing, you know, all those kind of things taken over and. I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, we, we, you could be there without loads of those kind of things. Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I never blame the, the, the owners, the Wankers family. Have a have a good relationship with them and all the things, and they're putting in loads of money. But I think it's people that's been misleading them by the by the way it's been. So I feel sorry when 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 people take advantage of other people. So I think if we could have uh, had other people to maybe. Do the advices, I think uh, Blackman could maybe take a step further or at least stay on the same level because we was on a really high level at the moment. So, But now things have changed a lot and it's the same owners. Uh, I've been back in Blackburn, the, the, the vibe on the training ground is like it used to be like the family-friendly club and uh, I stayed there for two weeks in January and I felt like I was home again and that was a really good feeling. So. I hope everything can uh, get back on track and they're rebuilding a new team and it's just a few points now off the, off the playoffs. So uh, I think in the next uh, next few years, Blackwell will be back in the Premier League. That will be good for the club and for the owners and everything to bounce back. So, you know, like you spoke about the quality of the championship. You played there for one season only and uh, you said that many, it's very competitive and you also played in Turkey, as you said, and also in uh, Norway, you are playing now, and, and also in English Premier League. So, uh, according to you, what is the biggest? Uh, like you said, the tempo is high in the Premier League. 
so how is like maybe the championship different from maybe a turkish <laughs> league <laughs> it's even higher tempo in the championship and uh, it's so many clubs and you know they you fight for your life there you know it's uh, and if you if you can get up to the premier league that's like the biggest aim you can have as a football and when you're in the championship you get a chance to get up there especially if you you are in the top and everything so and you get loads of good players there so uh, but in the turkish league it's a little bit different it's uh, it's more uh, maybe uh, misunderstand me right uh, more skillful and technical football but not so much tactics you know they the more the individual stuff and uh, in the, in england it was more like the team thing you get the individual individual players in the team but in turkey it was more only just individual so when i went to the club we actually had a little bit of tactics as well and and we we were leading in those kind of things so i think that's what we did well the year i was in turkey as well so you know like if you had to choose like one manager or coach head coach who had the biggest influence on you as a player who would that be i think it's hard to say one but i i would if i could choose i would say mark Hughes and sam alabas uh two very very good persons and managers the little bit different kind of football but the same way they are quite similar but not similar if you know what i mean so those two had a really good relationship with them and i think they have a very big impact on my career as well so definitely like so uh talking of your career you know you played for your national team also and you had quite a good batch of players like john curry or john and rise when you were playing how do you rate the current crop of players are they good well the old players i played with no no the present present lot the present oh the present lot oh sorry sorry yeah no of course it's uh, loads of young players coming up now and uh, and doing ever so well uh, i hope we can can get into uh, to, uh, to a tournament like the euros or the world cup that would be really nice for the country and for the football in in uh, in around here so uh they loads of young players coming up now you got the uh, Martin Erdigo you know you got the uh, yeah Berger in Sheffield United you got loads of like young upcoming stars so uh, hopefully if we can keep um keep get those kind of players coming up and we can take care of their players you know let them do well and fail or I think if you you can do that we will be even better so hopefully we can get a really good national team and qualify for the big tournaments So you know like as a player are you superstitious like do you follow certain uh, schedule before the games uh, I don't think I'm superstitious but uh, for some reason I always put like my left boot on first the left shin pad those kind of things but except that I'm not that superstitious but I think you get some things to do without thinking about it so if you ask someone else that has been watching me every day they'll probably say I do something superstitious but the only thing I know is that I put my left boot on first, and my, you know, left thing first. So that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, if you ask someone else, they'd probably say something else as well. I don't even think about. It. So you know, like uh, you played in the Premier League and all or other high-profile leagues, where you would have played with and against a lot of high-profile <coughs> opponents. But according to you, which opponent gave you the toughest time in the field? Oh, I mean, loads of. Uh, loads of good players, but uh, I always said this one game we played on Stamford Bridge. Uh, I played left wing. I think uh, it was Balletti that played right back. And on that day, he was just—I couldn't get past him or anything. I, I still remember it, you know. And you know, it's just one of those games. Uh, another thing—if I'm going to say the best player I ever played against, I will probably not say him. But in that particular game, I, he was just overlapping. He was just stopping. You know, he had totally control on me. at least to change position at the second half so that was nice but but you know sometimes it just feel that <laughs> nothing working and then uh, that's when i think about the hardest game but i'm been lucky to play get loads of good players so uh, yeah so you know, like uh, as a child growing up which was a favorite team yeah i was and i've never been like fanatic to supporting one team uh, the funny thing uh, Uh, my father was a United fan, and I would probably say I'm a United fan. But I still, <laughs> I was still watching Liverpool and Tottenham. So those three clubs are the three clubs I've always been like watching. So the, I have to say that United have been number one. But 
at these days, I have to say, that to watch Liverpool is just amazing. So uh, I'm not like fanatic. I never had a shirt and those kind of things. So uh, yeah. So, you know, um, yeah. Talking of uh, your uh, maybe the teams you have just mentioned, Liverpool and what do you think of Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool this season? Like they won the title after a lot of time. You have played there quite a lot of time. How? What do you think? Like what was it for the uh, city? Yeah, it's amazing for the city. It's been like 30 odd years or something since the last time one. Uh, it's the first time actually they're winning the Premier League. So, uh, and uh, it almost should be like they they should be there. You know, you got the big clubs like Liverpool, United, now City, Chelsea, Arsenal. You know, and but uh, of course you feel great for them. They, they, they've been the best team by far. You know, and when you're leading with uh, I don't know 26 points on City, you know that been the team the last few years so it just showed the impact Jurgen Klopp had on the team and how well they are yeah are working so I think it's uh, uh, the best football to watch at the moment is to watch Liverpool. So you know like uh, talking of Liverpool and staying in the Premier League as a Blackburn player which stadium was the most difficult for you to go and play like which was the most intimidating? Yeah, we had a really tough time going to uh, to play Arsenal away you know the Emirates it was always tough games there for some reason. They, uh, we had some okay results, but we had some bad results as well. But I feel like Emirates was one of the toughest places we could go and play. So, uh, and Arsenal had a really good team at that time as well. So, but, um, yeah, I think uh, Emirates away was maybe the, the toughest place to go. So, you know, like again, on, on your personal note, are you planning to getting into coaching after your career, maybe playing career? Yeah, I'm starting to do the badges and all my way and I'm, I'm halfway. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do all my badges and if I'm going to be a coach or whatever I'm going to do, I think it's nice to have because you learn uh, you learn a lot of other things than only football when you do the badges. So, uh, it's nice to have and you have to see maybe I'm going to play for 10 more years football. You never know. So <laughs> Hopefully you play for 10 more years. But, you know, like if you do not... <laughs> If you do not want to be a coach, you are you are also part of the band, the players, <laughs> along with maybe Christopher Hester and uh, Freddy Dos Santos. Are you planning to getting into on stage anytime soon? <laughs> no, no, that was just uh, the funny thing. It was just one off. There was uh, we did a song for charity. It was a one off uh, thing. So, uh, but we did well. We was. Uh, uh, number one on the top 20 list in Norway for a few weeks back in the days. But uh, I think we the music career is. Uh, is over. It was a one-time wonder. So, uh, but other things is uh, I do like businesses and those kind of things and investments. And uh, it's nice to have something else than football as well. So uh, now I'll get into more like personal level on your personal experience. Of course, till now also it was personal itself. But uh, you know, like uh, if you <coughs> had to choose one player with whom you played with, who is the most talented of the lot? Who would that be? Two guy. The Turkish delight. Well, uh, unbelievable player and an unbelievable person as well. But he, he had something extra with him, the X factor, and uh, yeah, it was a It was so nice to play with him in the middle. He he's, he could play the passes you he was just thinking about and dreaming about as a winger. So yeah, he was an amazing player. And also as a, as your own uh, player itself, if you had to choose one goal other than the Burnley one, which you just said. Which, you know, like, sometimes you go and look back, oh, wow, what a goal. Which one would that be? And, uh, of course, the winning goal at Old Trafford was special. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I got a few other goals. I think it's hard to decide because the goals are different. You know, uh, sometimes it's really nice to go back and look and look at the goals you've done just to get the, you know, the, the good feel and all the things. So, uh, but, uh, of course, there was always be uh, special to score the winning goal on Old Trafford against your your uh, your favorite team. So you know, like you have had a lot of experience at the highest level. You know, like probably one of like that's the highest level of football, maybe at international stage and Premier League. So uh, if you had to give advice, you know, like as a midfielder and as also as a <laughs> player to any young upcoming player, what would you give? Uh, first of all, it's important to have fun what you do. You know, I always had fun with football. Uh, when you get up to, you know, more serious, thing, serious things and those, uh, you need to train and practice. You don't get anything for free. You get loads of young players with ta talent and all the things, but 
uh, if the door if they're not are willing to work hard you can see like the, the players that don't have the same talent when they're young they're training hard they keep going and suddenly they just go past them and the, the, the talent that later think oh what's going on here but you know it's important to work hard you know practice some things and uh, some days will be tough and hard you know and it's not like every day is like uh, like walking on the sky so uh, but have a have a good time enjoy what you're doing and and hard work will pay off in the end and it doesn't matter where you're from i'm from a small place in the arctic circle you know when it's snow eight times a year eight months a year so uh yeah you can be good wherever you are so you know on that note i'll ask you one final question this is even more i think uh, daunting than facing belletti at stamford bridge or going to arsenal okay <laughs> <coughs> whom do you prefer Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi? You played against Ronaldo, I think. I played against both. Okay, both. Yeah, I, my debut was against United and Ronaldo. So, but if I have to choose one of them, I would go for Ronaldo. Why? Uh, I think in one way it's hard to compare Messi and Ronaldo because they're two totally different players, you know. Uh, but uh, I think Ronaldo are more completed. In, if you take all the physical terms, than Messi. What Messi does is no one else can do, not even Ronaldo, but lots of things that Ronaldo do, I think he got more of those things is hard to do than Messi got. Uh, I think it, yeah. both of them are the best players in the world, you know what I mean? But if I have to choose, I will go for Ronaldo in my team. Okay, I'll just sneak in one more question. Okay, it just popped up in my brain. So, uh, <laughs> since you are doing your coaching badges, is related to that, whom would you associate yourself more with? Guardiola, Klopp or Mourinho? <laughs> uh, I think I'll be Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> Is it because he's the flavor of the month? No, I don't know. I think uh, the energy and I always get lots of energy and those kind of things. So uh, uh, I miss the old Mourinho, I have to be honest. Uh, I love Mourinho. Like I still like him, but I think the old Mourinho with all the passion and all the things, I liked him more than he. He he's been a little bit too grumpy at the moment. So uh, I think he's a lot when he smiles and when he is on the top, you know, he. I like him, but at the moment I will go for Klopp. So you know, on that note, Martin, thank you so much for talking to me, and I wish you all the best for your playing career. Hope you play for more ten years, win everything <laughs> possible more, and uh, hope you go for coaching or. And I also hope you. Sing song. It was quite good. I just heard it, but I could not find the music video. I don't know whether it's there or not, but I heard the audio. I hope you all the best for that also. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to speak to you. Thank you. Thanks.